I'm going live. Hello, hello. Just adjusting the lightning a little bit. All the setup. Good evening, everyone, or good morning, depending on where you are into the world. So I'll be waiting a little bit to see if anyone is joining live. Because I'm here also to, to answer questions, uh, if you have any. What is this little black thing here? So if you're joining, I would love it if you could like give little thumbs ups or even let me know where you are located in the world. So this morning, I literally felt all of this wave coming to me as, oh, like, let's do a live on Activate the Healer Within, because I started receiving a lot of download and I just, you know, like how it happens. It's like this inspiration is there, the momentum is there, and then we, we just feel the need to share. And this is coming from a place of, there is a need at the moment for people to really step up into their full potential and to really follow their heart desires. So if you are joining this live, more likely, most likely you are, you are a healer or you feel inspired to be a healer. Maybe you are already working as a healer, but you don't know how to step into your power even more. And today I will literally help you shift that, to record your reality, to record the way you see yourself and to have a greater understanding of what it actually means to be a healer, because this is big. Hi, Mark. It's so nice to see you here. Thank you. Thank you for joining from Australia. Yay. Yeah, I love it when you comment, guys, because it allows me to feel the connection, you know, with people watching. And I, I just love it you know, to know where, where you are in the world. So it's just not like a one way because I do this life as well to be able to serve you. So if you have questions, if you have observation, if you have feedbacks, if you like to share, you know, like I'm here, this is my time for you to share some codes to help you shift but also to answer questions so go for it hi charlotte ah <laughs> thank you thank you for joining from christchurch Ooh, i love christchurch you know i used to live in christchurch uh, charlotte when we first moved to new zealand with uh, my ex-husband he actually chose that city because <laughs> that was the city of reaching mccall and dan Cartner back in the day <laughs> big rugby fan and also because there was a really nice brand new um hospital for delivery <laughs> and i was pregnant so yay so we lived in christchurch for a year loved it new brighton actually anyway So I know that you trust. Oh, hi, Alexandra. <laughs> Thank you for joining. I'm happy that you're here. So I know that most of you watching this and also watching the replay, you already trust that everything happens for a reason, right? And I was really inspired to do this, you know, sharing with you. And then I started advertising, send the email, put it on social. And then literally three hours ago, I had a chat with my beautiful friend and I had a big meltdown like um yeah he, he really he really cracked me open he poked me and i didn't like it and i said i was angry and yeah i cried on the phone and i was like why 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 is this happening like for goodness sake like i'm supposed to have a life in a couple of hours i'm just not feeling it <laughs> i'm so i'm such a mess so we ended up having a such a powerful conversation for an hour then i went to the gym sweat it out and then bam all the loud downloads started coming this is why this is why this happens in this sequence. This is really to allow me to share with a greater embodiment of these codes of what it means to be a healer. Because when we start thinking about what it means to be a healer, we are already thinking about things that we have to be doing, things that we know. And actually, being a healer comes from more from a place of embodiment. So the way we work on ourselves is going to allow us to serve other people. Because here is the thing, being a healer has got nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the frequency that we channel to be able to serve others. So our role is to get out of the way so we can actually the he channel simply the frequency that needs to come through us to allow the other person to receive. So that is very important because I find that a lot of us, when we 
we feel that we, you know, we are a healer. We think we don't know enough. We don't have enough tools in our toolbox. Like oh, I cannot repair bones, you know, I can not heal this disease, you know, like, so it means I'm useless. It's got nothing to do with that. It's like, because when we start thinking this way, it's all about us. I'm not good enough. I'm not this, I'm not that. Well, actually that's got nothing to do with us. It's got everything to do with being able to channel being able to serve because if the calling is there it means that we are mission so it means that we are here to serve other people and we serve other people by experiencing humility and saying basically i'm just here to serve other people so i'm going to allow what needs to come through to be able to come through so i can serve so there are different healing ways it's not because we cannot repair bones and diseases and indices that we are not healers, right? That is just a physical level, guys. There is also the mental, emotional, and spiritual levels that we are here to heal and alchemize. A lot of people, we're going to get stopped because we don't see shift happening on the physical level. But if we can start tuning in more into what we experience personally and what the person we work with is experiencing on a mental level, on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, then that can boost our confidence, right? Instead of saying, oh my God, this little thing is still there. My finger is not repaired. Like I'm useless. I'm not a healer. I might as well forget about it. No, 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 no. It's about understanding that the tools we have in our toolbox are here to help shift frequencies because everything is frequency. So the physical body is just frequency vibrating at a certain level. Then we have the mental body frequency vibrating at a certain level same with emotional body yet another level of vibrational frequency and then we have the spiritual body and light body and so on and so on so we are simply attuning ourselves to be able to channel a certain frequency and that frequency is going to come into the soft tissues into the bones but it's also going to come into the dna therefore shifting and in the you know in the cells we hold we store emotions that are trapped so maybe we don't repair the skin and the bones but we actually allow the cells to shift in frequencies by removing everything that was low frequency stuck there you know, like all these stuck emotions that basically shut that cell down and that therefore it trigger a ripple effect of proper physical illnesses. But what we're going to do by simply channeling those frequency through is to allow the cells to shift and therefore to start with there is a purging. So often like we start feeling worse than that when we were before healing sessions, right? Or the, the person we work with is feeling worse. But after that, the purging, there is this deep, profound feeling of clarity of peace and then energy life force energy can flow more easily so when we work on healing we work with frequency we work with life force energy and i'm, I'm not, not going to go into modalities everybody's got different modalities and it's literally like the big spectrum of healing right like you know reiki is just like one of the healing you know modalities for example in the body of work that i channel it's a lot around quantum alchemy and quantum healing and that we go a lot deeper into you know the fractals the fractal reflection and all of these alchemy process or the healing process so here i'm not going to go into any details i trust that you already have the calling and we just anyone can channel frequency is just by learning receiving attunements you know studying with some you know different modalities we literally remember it's mostly remembering remembering what's already there and we also trigger greater awakening greater ability to channel life force energy through this attunement because we do the work ourselves we can serve others and this is where i'm coming with this story that happened to me earlier because you know, I do the work constantly, you know, like it's kind of like I'm a spiritual growth junkie. But like some of you, you know, like my mom passed nearly a year ago and I've been doing it. Uh, I've been doing kind of great with the grieving process. But as the time comes of the one year anniversary of her passing, um, 
you know, I knew that I would need some time for myself and I can really observe that I can, I kind of have this feeling of I run, I'm a bear and I want to go back in my cave, you know, like every time I'm in pain, in a lot of emotional pain, this is what I do, I retrieve in my cave. And if people poke you, I'm just gonna go like, go away. And if they keep on poking me, like, that can turn nasty, like the bear kind of gets angry, like get the fuck, fuck out of my cave, right? And so my beautiful friend did that today. <laughs> like we was like we used to chat a lot and um, like we, we had to do a, a couple of things together. And basically I pulled away from everything. I told him like, uh, I love you very much. Like you're amazing, you're still my friend, but I really need space, you know, I really need space. And for me, it was, I had communicated what I needed, right? So I told him that. And he sent me a text like, yeah, no, like I really need to talk about it. Like something doesn't feel aligned. I was like, oh, you know, like, oh, he's so annoying, so annoying. I don't want to talk about it. I told him I need space. I want him to respect my space. But because I love, like, I love him. He's such an amazing person. I thought like, I don't want to lose him as a friend. I'm going to go online. So we started talking and he's like, but why do you need space? You know, like you can't just, just say it and then just turn your back away from me and not, explain why like what's going on with you like what's going on in your heart what's going on for you and i lost my shit <laughs> i was like i'm so angry at you i'm angry at you for poking me like this i told you i needed space and i don't want to go into details and then after things like i'm angry i'm angry alex i don't want to share about this and then straight away bam tears started rolling down because it basically he cracked me open and what happened is it was this profound wave that was coming of all the repressed emotions. You know, it's like, I can cry by myself, you know, when I'm, when I'm hiding, but no way I'm gonna show it to anyone. Like, I'm gonna show it to any of my friends. I don't have a partner, so it's fine. Even I don't cry in front of my kids. Yeah, sometimes I have a little tear, I'm like, oh, you know, I feel really sad because, you know, grandma, like, mommy's gone and so on and so on. So I really basically, like, I'm strong. I hold my, sh my shit together. So. I'm sharing this with you because it's literally walking the talk of doing the work to hear. <clears throat> Sorry. <coughs> so for me, by going into my cave and processing my feeling, it was kind of healing. Yes, and it's healing through my grief but only to a certain extent, because when we don't allow other people to come into our field and to hold space for whatever we are experiencing, and it can be emotionally, it can be physically, mentally, or spiritually, then it means that we are very limited because there is only so much we can see for ourselves. There is only so much we can do for ourselves. And this process of going inward is healthy to a certain extent because i have experienced depression in my life you know like um after having my first daughter i was really really bad and i was really like going more and more and more with it so i know that for me yes it's good but to a certain extent and i have to kind of get out there but never really allow anyone in because allowing people in means literally poking on the wound poking and how, why does it relate to healing codes, you might ask. Thank you for asking. It's another, another way to, to share about this is, I used to go and see a therapist back in the days, like, I can't even remember, like over 20 years ago. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna go and see that therapist because I feel like I really need help. I need support and I'm gonna share in one month. I'm gonna share everything. We're gonna shift like this and my life's gonna be amazing. Well, seven months later, I was still crying and crying at every session and I felt it was going nowhere until the therapist stopped being silent because it was just silence, you know, like, listening like that so annoying <laughs> but you know i was just crying you know processing my own thing i was just like he was holding space basically a man until one day he told me you know like sandrine i've been really listening to you for all this time and blah 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 but i really think now it's important to start talking about your father and he poked me exactly <laughs> exactly where i needed to be poked so i lost my shit and i told him there's nothing wrong with my relationship with my father I don't talk to him, he's shit, <laughs> and there is nothing to talk about it. Basically, he was right. So he triggered even more pain to allow me to open up, 
And that was really unpleasant. And I find that a lot of us on our healing journey, we stop at a certain level because there is so much pain. So it's like this big iceberg, right? And we have all of a sudden, like we do all of this work on ourselves. We have all of these light bulbs. We go to see this therapist, that therapist, that healer, that healer. It's like, oh yeah, great. You know, I've cleared that. Well, wait a minute. Iceberg coming out. <laughs> red alarm, red alarm. All the work we have to still do that is still right there. Very often, like the top of the iceberg is what we understand on a mental level. It's what we see on a mental level. What we don't know is everything that is under is actually emotional shift and also spiritual shift. So everything like, like it's also physical because all of these frequencies they are trapped in the body. So the role of a healer is to not only hold space for the other person to process depending on the modalities you use like for example i listen a lot like i really listen to the people you know i mentor and i and i coach because the power of like truly listening to someone really allows you know people to process so much to channel so much for themselves this is why therapists don't talk much usually you know i really honor them I really honor therapists because they have so much um, ability to simply hold space for the person to self-heal so that is one way of allowing the person to really to start going deep 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 but then we're gonna start poking the person and a lot of us because we are so empathic and so compassionate, we can see the pain is like, oh, I can't, like this person is struggling so much already, I can't possibly, you know, poke more. But if my friend today hadn't poked me, the conversation would have ended with me basically being pissed off at me for just, you know, kind of asking me for more than what, what I could give and he wouldn't have allowed me to go into the layers I needed to go to really crack open, to really open my heart and to basically bring our relationship to a new level where I know that I can cry with this man over the phone and he's just gonna simply hold space for me and be there for me without judgment. And then it's gonna make me laugh and you know, it's gonna be really, really nice. So as healer, when we start seeing our you know, the person we work with going through shift is having no fears about our own abilities to hold space for them. Because as human beings, guys, we are wired. We are wired to connect. We are wired to, to be there for one another. It's like, it's, it's in our genes. This is basically survival of the species, right? We have to be there for the people around us. Otherwise, we, you know, just the end of society. So, when we are here for the people we serve, we help them by holding space for them. We are here to mirror. We are here to say, when you share this, like what else is there and why is it there? We ask why and why and why. And we allow the person to process emotions. It is important to realize that when we encourage that into you know, this process to happen for other people, we must walk the talk, which is what I did today. This is exactly what my friend told me. It's like, Sandrine, if you were talking to one of your, the people you coach, for goodness sake, what, you would, you, what would you say to them? I was like, oh, I would say to them that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to open your heart. It's okay to cry. You know, like it's a lot of, for a lot of people, it's easier to serve than to receive. So today it's really an invitation for you to also observe how you receive from other people. Because a lot of healers, we are called as givers. We give, we give, we give, we give. But when it is our time to receive, it's like, oh, I don't need it. I should be able to process it by myself. I have so many tools. I mean, like I heal, you know, I work as a healer, as a coach, as a mentor. Why is it that I cannot process that myself? Because we're human, for goodness sake, like we are human. Our human self needs to be held. Our human self needs to be understood and loved with all the layers and all the messiness that we are. So we can and we are learning to be our own angel, our best friend, our guardian. It's like, I'm like, 
oh, Sindrine, you're so cute, you know, like, you're so lovely, like, you don't want to show your vulnerability because you don't want to be a burden for other people, you don't want to push people away with your sadness and your grief, you don't want to do that, oh, it's so cute, like, I don't judge myself for being like that, you know, we always do the best we can with what we have. So it is very important to realize that when we are on the path of serving others as a healer, it is always what we're going to face is always a reflection of things that we are healing ourselves and alchemizing ourselves. So why is this important to realize that? It's important to realize that because it's one of the biggest block that prevent us from serving at the highest. It's because when we start serving others with our, all our tools in our toolbox, they're gonna start saying things and showing things that are going to be a direct mirror of things that we are processing ourselves or that we have processed in the past, but there's still things that need to be alchemized and healed here. If we don't have enough self-responsibility, if we are not ready to do the work ourselves, we're going to find all sorts of excuses not to do it. Hmm? We're going to say, oh, like, I'm not good enough. I cannot really help that person or that person is too much for me, or like, you know, like, we're going to start finding all sorts of excuses simply not to be present, not to hold space, and not to serve, not to get ourselves out of the way. So when this happens for me, for example, I realize that, and I realize that, so yes, people mirror things, but after a while, you know, you process all of that, and then it, it becomes very, very little. So when I realize that, somebody I'm coaching, I'm mentoring, I'm working, you know, at healing and alchemizing with is actually really mirroring something that I'm processing. I realize that because I have, I have reactions. So I have goosebumps or I'm, I'm feeling like some kind of emotions arising or thoughts going like that, 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 like that in my mind. I was like, oh, okay. So this is very interesting what this person is sharing because it really, it really shows that I still need to work on myself. So I, I allow that to, to happen. I acknowledge that, that intuition arising. And I kind of put like a, a side note, you know, so then I can serve the person into saying, oh, thank you so much, you know, for, you know, for sharing this with me and then continue the session. So this level of self-responsibility of walking the, the talk really is going to allow us to step into our role as a healer with so much humility, so much humility, so much compassion, but also courage because healing requires courage code big time hmm? because it's unpleasant. If it's healing on a physical level, it's very unpleasant. We're in pain, you know, like like the body shit. So it's it's unpleasant. When we healing emotionally, it's it's painful because we look at sides, you know, in like some aspect of ourselves that we dislike, you know, this is why it, it needs healing because it's unbalanced, it's not aligned to the magnificent eternal soul that we are. You know, our human is in pain. You know, it's the same with healing certain mental processes. Like It's like mental loops of drama, for example, of victimization or like limiting belief that we say, like we need to heal that. It's unpleasant. So we have to be courageous. Mm -hmm. Like no shift happen with a lack of courage. It's not by sitting on the couch, watching Netflix, feeling sorry for ourselves that you're gonna heal anything into our life. That just, that, that, that doesn't happen. <laughs> like for that, we have to take aligned actions and to take aligned actions is being courageous. Mm -hmm. So to really activate the healer within, this like, first is realizing that it's not about us. It's not about us at all. It's about the frequency that we are here to bring through. And we bring it through our hands. If we work with hand placement, we bring it through our heart portal because a lot of the time we actually 
heal from the heart so like in the fractal shift online course that i have just released which is amazing like it's a proper new body of work that i'm so privileged to channel so it's like a channeling from source and i co-created with advanced star races and through this body of work, we really are here to shift, you know, shift all of these, you know, systems inside of us so we can really serve others and we can really self heal. So when we start anchoring into that, then we can serve others, realizing that it is not about us, it is about serving others from the heart. So in that body of work, everything comes from the heart. Like we don't even talk about the mind anymore because everything is so like the heart portal is so worked on that we start vibrating from the heart and the electromagnetic field of the heart does the work of healing because the, ele like the electromagnetic field of the heart can literally be measured like meters away from the body. So when we start working with this kind of quantum quantum shift that I'm channeling is like the heart part that is literally going like super, super far away. So it means that all the people around us, they're going to start perceiving this frequency. They're going to start receiving the frequency that we shine from the heart. So that's such a powerful way to heal others. It's by actually, <laughs> we don't heal others. We are simply so heart centered so connected to sun, so connected to the earth that we are constantly channeling life force energy from the heart. You know, with so much love and compassion and humility that we shine those frequencies that other people are going to receive and it's an invitation for them. It's an invitation for other people to really bring those frequency in and to allow that to be processed through each and every one of their cells by removing low frequencies and activating the higher level of frequencies prevent, uh, present within each and every one of their fractal. So this is the first thing that's very important to realize that as a healer, we serve others by getting out of the way and working from a place of love, right? Because if you are interested in healing others, it's because you love them. Yeah, like we love humans, right? We love humans so much. And we love our spirit guides and we love God and we love the earth. I mean, we have so much love and just really like anchor that in, you know, like really realize that it is not about us being good enough or not good enough. No, it's about this heart desire that is there for a reason. The heart's desires are so many seeds planted by the soul, are so many signs of our purpose. So if we allow ourselves to really look into our heart desire of, of, of working as a healer, of channeling these frequencies to serve other people, to heal ourselves also, because we deserve it, because we are kind of course, you know, receive all of that for ourselves as well. When we start really channeling that in, we completely get out of the way. And this is when literally miracles happen because we are here simply holding space. So that is the first thing, realizing that the more we shift, the more we open, the higher we vibrate, the more we can tap into higher and higher level of frequencies and vibrations because we work with such... Um, so much love that the frequency we channel they are very uh, very advanced they are purest and purest the more we get out of the way so the second thing to really anchor the healer within is to realize that every time we are in a session with a person is that that person is going to most likely start mirroring things that we still have to process to a certain extent you know heal and alchemize so we take note of that so we know that we can walk the talk after afterwards because when we start shifting we can hold more life force energy it's literally what my friend told me earlier today when i started having you know like crying and was having all of these emotions arising it's like sandrine you do realize that by you know, shifting all of these frequencies of bottling up so much, you know, like hiding so much in your cave by allowing yourself to be seen and, and held by me, then it means that you like literally shifting low frequencies from your being, allowing higher level of frequencies to flow in. 
so you can serve others. And this is where he got me because I was like, <laughs> not liking. And it's like, hey, this is what's going to shift you, Saint Rain. You're here to serve others, right? So think about this. Do the work. Cry. Be vulnerable in front of me. It means that you will be a more powerful coach, a more powerful healer, a more powerful alchemist. I was like, oh, yeah, you're so right. Yes, okay, okay, okay. I can do it because it means that I will serve others. So if you like me, don't, if you, if there's aspects of your life, of your personality, of your human, you know, of your emotions that you also avoid uh, looking into, you can tap into the divine knowing that honoring that, shifting that will allow you to be more there for other people, which ultimately it's what we want. We want to be there for other people as we are here for ourselves. So, right, it's like walking the talk, other people are mirrors. Okay, so I'm just going to check if, I, if there is any question. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. It's so nice to see you all. Hey, Kins, and yeah. Nice. Oh, hi, Haiti. So nice to see you. Hi, Tara. Yay. Awesome. Yes, the replay will be available. Hi, Robert. Yay, Alex. I'm sharing with you, Alex. Thank you for poking me today. Yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it's like... Yeah, um, I was sharing, Alex, with everything that you shared and how you poked me exactly how it, I needed to be and how it was perfectly aligned, of course, for this talk. Because what Alex actually did, it, he was he was a healer for me. He allowed me to tap into this this frequency of of shifting. And so this is how we are healers. It's by you know allowing the other person to have the space needed to process their own shit. So we get out of the way, we just poke exactly what <laughs> what needs to be poked and then we hold space with so much, so much love. So that's really powerful. Please let me know, guys, if you have any questions, I would be very, very happy to answer. Um, there is just um, something that I would like to share with you because it's quite, I feel it's quite interesting for a lot of people on this path. It's like there is a big difference between healing and alchemizing. So the healing process is to really going into, into the wounds, working with the inner child and the trauma and see why and how and when and like allowing the emotions to arise and like that that is the healing part right is to taking time holding space doing the process going to the root of the thing so constantly working like this and then there is the path of alchemy and the path of alchemy is available to us at every moment every time we feel something arising in our field we can shift instantly like that by alchemizing the frequencies and if that doesn't work, then we know that there is healing to be done. So what does that mean, Centrain? It's like when you are, for example, being poked, when you are being triggered, you are observing. It's like, okay, I'm observing that this person with what this person is saying, it's really triggering me. Like, can I alchemize this? Can I alchemize this simply by feeling, by acknowledging it? Okay, I acknowledge that I'm feeling angry right now. Stupid example, typical me in my car. Whew, I'm feeling really angry right now because this person in front of me is going so slow. For goodness sake, it's a hundred on the motorway. It's not like, hey, gee. And then... I observe that and I instantly alchemize it by laughing at myself. It's like, look at you, Sandrin, being so judgmental again and going into the, that wormhole again. Is it really what you want to be doing? It's like, mm, just two more minutes. Blah, 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 blah. And then, yeah, it's done now. I don't need to go into details. I'm just alchemizing this, like sending this that person like beautiful vibes, you know, like, thank you so much for being here to allow me to observe my process to see what I need to shift and to you know, to shift in instantly. So that, that's alchemizing. I don't need to go into details on why and how this, you know, this reaction was there to heal emotionally around the fact that 
It's very triggering for me to drive behind slow drivers on the motorway. My apologies if one day it's you, like driving in Wellington. I won't say what car I drive, so you never know it's me. Anyway, so like that is alchemizing. It's like in the moment you realize what is going on and you're choosing higher frequencies available to you in this moment. So instead of going into the lower fractal reflection of the experiences, you're going into the higher fractal reflection of the experiences, higher frequency of I laugh at myself with so much compassion. Oh, look at Sandrine, beautiful human, being so triggered by snails on the road. Uh, he's so cute, he's so cute. But like, let's love these people, you know, like, I, like, not much. So you understand the difference, right? So every time something is arising in my field, I have this instant, like, um, understanding of, oh, like, yeah, there is something here, there is something there, there is something there. And then kind of alchemize, yeah, alchemizing, 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 until we, we encounter something that is bigger. And we know it is bigger because basically, the situation is presenting itself a lot more. We find that we are overthinking about it. We constantly think about it, think about it, think about it. And life keeps on poking. Life keeps on sending signals like yeah, there's more to this. There is more to this. There is more to this. So there we go into healing. It's like, why do I feel like this? When did I start feeling like this? And, and what are my reactions? What are the emotions? Where is it located in my body? So like, it's amazing to be able to tune into your body, by the way, because everything is stored in the physical body. And if we don't go into embodiment of healing, if like truly, you know, get rid of the low frequency from the cells, it's just going to continue, you know, self perpetuating So in the fractal shift online course, actually, that, you know, I, I have channeled, that I keep on channeling this amazing body of work, we work with archetype and star races. So there's all of these tools where we can literally see our physical body through all of these different quantum technology. And we can start isolating the one cell, you know, the one cell that shut down because of a trauma when we were little. And then we work on alchemizing and on healing the cells. So basically it's, it's removed from the body. It's not there any longer. It creates this ripple effect on multidimensional level, you know? So we go and we isolate the cells we can see we can see like many cells or one cell it's just so next level like working with holograms from the andromedan star rays they are very advanced with um so it's like hologram representation of yourself but I, i'm not gonna go into details because it's quite advanced uh, advanced quantum healing and alchemy but if you are interested you know this online course is available now and it's on my website if you are ever keen into diving deep into this advanced body of work okay thank you lisa how can we remain grounded with channeling such high frequencies? I often find my guts can get a bit funny. Oh, I love this, uh, Lisa. Thank you so much. Yes. So the gut brain, so like in the guts, we have our brain and it's all about the instinct. And it's like the in intuition that is linked to the amygda amygdala. And that really relates to um, the, the lower frequencies that are present within the self or the other person and that are around uh, frequencies such as danger, fear, alarm, alarm, and all of that is gut, you know, like if you go into a very creepy place full of ghosts, you're going to have this literally, it's a gut instinct, get the fuck out of here. If you walk at night in a dark alley and you can start hearing, you know, noises behind you, it's like this gut instinct, like choo -choo, start running, you know, like not crazy, start running. So like when we start experiencing things in the gut, it shows that we are dealing with very low frequency. So it's very important to keep on breathing to, uh, through that, to drink a lot of water and to make sure that our digestion and gut system is very healthy. So it's, yeah, there are so many tools, you know, that can be used for this, Lisa. I'm, I'm sure that you have, you know, tools in your toolbox. I would say that this often relates to this really primal instinct uh, that we are clearing from other people. And if we feel it very strongly ourselves, it's because it's still things that we, we have to heal ourselves. So 
most humans have got uh, problems. Uh, we have got problems because of, of the food we eat, the water we drink, that everything basically is toxic and polluted. And um, eating meat also, like, you know, like meat actually can stay in the physical body for up to eight years. So it's basically like it's full of rotten flesh. So I have a, a friend who's um, He's like, he works on ambulances and he says like, sorry, it's a bit gross guys, but I thought it was mind blowing that basically what he has people with like, you know, like pretty bad wounds with gut open, they instantly know if that person is a meat eater because it smells like death. It smells like rotten flesh. And it's because of the older rotten meat inside the belly. I was like, oh, <laughs> it's gonna, not gonna happen to me, thank you. It's like been <laughs> nearly five years with no meat. So it's very important to have a very healthy digestive tract and gut system. So when we start healing others, we don't uh, get so, um, a trigger in our own gut. So now something that is coming, they say also remind people that we are experiencing upgrades ourselves, you know, like our galactic team, our earth team is kind of working on us, like with cosmic shot surgery and opening up to new codes and so on. Then it can trigger simply uh, like gut bloating and so on, like very big belly because we are we are processing so we are processing removing all of these low frequencies and when low frequencies are removed in the physical body they need to get you know, to get out so very often it's go down there and something good to do is uh, to sweat actually like i make sure i sweat nearly every day so instead of getting bloated i'm just very sweaty <laughs> um, for me, it's more manageable. I like it. So very interesting uh, question, Lisa, around the gut being funny. Also, the other aspect of your question, yes, we're working with very high level of frequency. We do get a little bit high, uh, lightheaded or very lightheaded. Um, yeah, I get that a lot um, when I channel, trans channel or even like, like this, it's like, Ooh. so yes, it's working on all grounding practices, right? Like connecting to the earth with the soles of the feet, massaging the feet, walking bare feet outside, hugging trees. Alex is starting a club. If you live in Bali and you're interested, Alex would love to have a hugging tree club, <laughs> right, Alex? So any kind of, of grounding is extremely important. So when we work as healers and channeling frequencies, it's also important to work with the earth realms. And a lot of us, we kind of forget about that because like star races are so cool, but there's also all the earth frequencies that are here to help us. So what I do is that I, I really connect to the core of Gaia and I ask Gaia to send me, to send me all, you know, all her energy basically. And I feel like, whoop, like this. And it's very, very, um, like boom, intense, like pinning me down. And I feel like just give me all the nutrients, all the energy that you can send me so I can, you know, heal myself, alchemize myself, but also serve others. And it's working with the, with the frequencies, the grids of the earth and also earth elementals. So working with like tree spirit and fairies and dragons and giants, like all part of the earth realm. So they are all here as well so they can balance the frequencies we channel in our field as well if uh, lisa you're familiar with going into alternate realities around uh, lemuria for example that is also balancing with working with more earth frequency so all of that i go in depth um, in the mastermind that I'm going to start in February, working with the Earth Elemental and Star Races. So like balancing these polarities to heal and alchemize the self and others. So yeah, like grounding, grounding, grounding. And after the session, it always creates space for the self. So after a trans channeling session, for example, I have at least three hours. So this is why now I only do two max trans channeling sessions a week because the frequencies are so powerful that I'm basically like, I out in the ferries with my galactic team for another three hours until I can feel very grounded. So uh, I love space before to really ground myself. So before a session, I take an hour to ground and to be really, really present and connected through my vertical axis. And then after I take 
I allow three hours before having any kind of activities. I don't want to have another session, but maybe I have a, you know, like a coaching call or something like that. So it's really like understanding on how you work. Because the way I work is not the same way as everyone works, which is important. Yes, I knew there was something else that needed to come. You see, I love questions. Thank you, Lisa, because when questions are being asked, it literally opens the doors to be able to channel more. And this is how I lost it. What was I talking about? I have a blank. <laughs> what was I talking about? Alex, what was I talking about? <sighs> I'm just gonna tune back in and see. If if anyone can tell me what was I what was I talking about? It, re it re literally reminds me when I, I like I used to smoke weed a long time ago, every now and then, you know, like as a pleasure, like I would have this blank all the time. I would be like downloading and chatting with my friends and having all of these things. And all of a sudden I look at them and I was like, what the fuck, what are they saying? Which is very funny because they said I just stopped talking, send drink. Mm. I'm just going to read here a little bit. Yes, taking care of the physical body helps a lot. Walking barefoot, touching trees, yes. <laughs> Elementals and earth codes and how my mastermind is lit. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Alex. <laughs> yes, yeah, I love it. Mm. I'm just going to check here. So if you have any questions, please let me know because I had a blank, so like it might might come again or it's not it's not meant to be. <sighs> so they say like um so they say that a lot, so I'm just going to open up my channel now because you see like I'm thinking out of my rational mind what I'm supposed to be saying and that's not working. So this is when I realize, oh, something is not working. How can I alchemize that? Well, I can alchemize that by shifting frequency. How do I shift frequency? I open up my channel and I can always trust my channel because my guides are amazing. So I'm just going to allow my guides now to come in and to take over. So it's not about me thinking about what I must say, but it's allowing them to feel in the field of the people, you know, present here and also on the replay about what needs to be shared. So they say an, a very important understanding is to realize that the notion that we bring in our field when we think that we heal is already coming from the understanding that there is something wrong with us. And this is why they prefer, and this is why they teach me to teach others to use alchemizing instead most of the time. Because when we go into alchemizing, it's like we are channeling from our power we are channeling from oneness it's like we are literally experiencing all the frequencies within the self and we choose to experience the highest level of frequency available to us when we go into more of a healing mode it means that there is a trauma it means that we are broken somewhere so it means that there is something wrong with us so it, they say it's very important when we start going into healing healing the cells the physical body healing the emotion healing the inner child is like we are healing the human the human always they say like talk about the human you are healing your human because the soul and the human are are not the same not the same frequency so when we talk about healing we talk about this physicality at this time and space in this time and space reality, understanding that it is right here, right now, because at every moment we have available to us the infinite possibility that reside within the quantum. And in the infinite possibilities residing within the quantum, there is also the possibility that we don't heal, need healing ever again, because we have actually tapped into the highest identity available to us, highest timeline available to us, where we are whole where we are healed, healed, where we are one already. So when we go into healing mode, it's realizing that we are here to support the human, catch up 
to the frequency of the soul because that's the human that's the physical mental and emotional bodies each vibrating at different level of frequencies that needs healing this is not the soul so it's like the soul or like our infinite self is acknowledging okay so human needs assistance i'm gonna be there to you know to help my human heal and alchemize also maybe to help that human heal and alchemize how do i do that i do that by trusting trusting because i am the infinite spark of the divine am i not are you not are you not the infinite spark of the divine yes you are you completely are we all are so when we start tapping into this infinity that we are we can realize that of course of course i can serve myself of course i can serve others that's got anything to do with me it's simply tapping into my soul into my pure alignment connecting to the earth frequency connecting to the galactic realms tapping into the heart of the supreme consciousness so i can channel this and i can be there to serve the human that needs my assistance i can be there to help shift frequency on physical mental emotional level so the human can have a shift in, 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 in vibrations that are going to be bring it closer to matching the soul frequency. This is how we start reaching soul alignment, by the way. It's by bringing the human levels, physical, mental, e emotional, to more oneness, to more harmony, to more alchemy. So this package of the human can start matching the frequency of the soul, which is very big because the soul is eternal. The soul has all the cause residing. So to a certain extent, we are all healers because we are the spark of the divine. We are the universe. The universe is present within us. So of course we can heal. Of course we can alchemize. But it's like not all of us have that as a mission. Not all of us have that as a purpose, you see. Sometimes it arises in our field that I want to heal. I want to work as a healer. And we give it a try for a moment with certain modalities, but it's not really that. So we're gonna start trying something different and starting something different because we are activating certain codings that reside within us until eventually all of this that we have started activating, all of that makes sense, you know, bam, the package is here, Ooh, soul, full soul purpose, soul mission, fully activated. So it is very important to always remember that what we alchemize and what we heal is the human, it's not the soul because the soul is eternal. So they say it is important also to remember that, for example, when we work with past lives, soul retrieval, like this is something I used to do big time, like for years, you know, working as a spiritual healer, I would work with soul retrieval and fragments of souls lost in different places. And, you know, like my fragments of souls that are with other people, it's actually not as such the fragments of souls that we work with it's not so much soul retrieval it is more the soul carries the mental body with it through time and space realities so the mental body still carries the memory of a past trauma that happened in an alternate reality and that is what we work with because the soul is whole always hmm? thank god otherwise we'd be fucked Otherwise, there would be no more of us because, you know, like, I don't know about you, but I know that I've been, you know, traveling for a pretty long time. You know, if I had to lose my soul every time I experience a trauma, there would be no more of me. So it's very good to know that the soul is always whole. And it's very important to know because it means that when we can tap into that oneness, the infinite power of our soul, then everything is there. Everything we there, we can just get out of the way and allow the process to happen with so much love and fluidity. See, it's very good, right? To step out of the mind, to alchemize whatever is happening so we can open up the channel. Mm, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Not everybody is working the same way. Thank you, Bukia. <laughs> You're my girl, Bukia. Yes, not everybody is working the same way. Ah, thank you so much, Booker. I love you. So, we are all unique fractals. So, we are all universe, but we all have activated cause differently. We all have different personalities, different egos. We want to get rid of the lower ego 
but we want to cultivate the higher ego, which is our quirk, our spark, our personality, you know, you know, what makes us like a cool human to hang out with, right? So we all channel in different ways, we all heal in different ways. And I don't know about you, I would love to I would love to hear that, but I have worked and learned so many modalities around healing, like Reiki, Edina, and like emotional release and all of these things and they're all great you know don't get me wrong i'm not here to you know condemn anything not at all but they're always so limited if this was like this is how you do it this is how you do that this is where the hands go this is what you're gonna concentrate on it's like where's the freedom in that there's no freedom in that it's too limited if for me as soon as I started doing Reiki, I was like full on cosmic surgery, working with advanced star races because it didn't fit in the freaking box. I was like not allowing me to open and channel even more of that until one day I was like, let's put the Reiki outside completely and let's just do my thing and just I just went next level. So it is very important to tune into yourself and to allow yourself to fucking smash the box down. Yeah, yeah, because all box, all around modalities that are limited, saying this is how you do it, bam, 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 chuk, 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 that's outdated in reality, guys. That is not 5D New Earth. 5D New Earth is having this level of empowerment. My cat is going crazy, like really literally crazy. She's gonna settle down. <laughs> she might attack me. You might have some entertainment here. She never does that, but you know. So it's like having this level of freedom and mastery of trust of our soul connection that we are basically embracing whatever comes through working with this frequency that way this quantum technology coming down this com cosmic surgery arising in our field these star races these earth elementals these dragons you know it's like having so much trust in our channel so much trust in the frequency we feel that we just we just go for it basically and this is where the body of work that I channel is so revolutionary. This is why it's happening to me, I guess, because I've always been like too narrowing, too narrowing, too narrowing. Is there something, please, that's going to allow me to be free and to experience? Because this body of work is literally that. My road as a channel is simply to channel the body of work with as much purity as possible and to present it to the student. So if the students are here present receiving it fully embody their own trust in their own divine channel frequency healing healers then the student can basically receive the frequency and just start working with it the way they like and i love it because like some of my <laughs> i love it alex like some of my my students that are triggered by that like have this beautiful beautiful uh, amazing uh, student lauren who is now working in my mastermind she's the quantum healer in my mastermind and like maybe 10 months ago when she started working with me um she was still learning kinesiology and same thing too narrowing so i never told her stop you know learning kinesiology i will never say anything like that people do what the fuck they want so she continued learning uh, kinesiology and at the same time you know like she was learning from me from like this new body of work opening her intuition starting working with star races and quantum technology and then one day she told me recently sandrine are you gonna finally tell me how to do it and then she looked at me i know you're not gonna do it because it's exactly the opposite of what you are bringing <laughs> and i was like yes she gets it so she was triggered in that way and she had so much understanding of her own process that it was very challenging for her to trust her channel entirely to realize that she never liked the frame but when she was given the freedom, she didn't know what to do with it. So that was such a powerful moment for her and such a powerful moment for me to realize I'm doing it. Like it's exactly, I, I, I think I'm fucking fulfilling my purpose of being able to channel a body of work that's gonna revolutionize the healing and the alchemist and like the light leaders, because it's not only for healer and alchemist. I also have people working with me who not 
who don't work as healer and alchemist, but that's mostly, you know, like that's the kind of the core of the crew, the bigger crew, right? Is that to allow people to be so anchored into their divine uniqueness that they receive the content, that they trust their channel, they trust their abilities, and that they go for it. And oh my God, guys, like the quantum shift happening are just phenomenal. They are phenomenal. And I'm, I'm not doing much. I'm not doing like, I'm just channeling something and not giving people what they want which is a frame because that's why they come you know they come because they don't want the frame because they're like me because when we start working with people so if you are a healer a channel you know alchemist and so on or a mentor like the people that work with you very often they're coded very similarly to you like so they're gonna have similar quirks maybe and similar likes and dislikes and and similar need in terms of, of spiritual expansion so for me, I'm not surprised that I have, you know, people, more and more, you know, people coming in my field as students who are, they are rebellious, rebellious at heart, you know, they've had enough, they've had enough of boxes and frames and so on. So they come because they need freedom and I'm here to anchor freedom. So yay, good match. And they also love working galactic realms and advanced star races and earth elementals to just they just love depth, you know, they love to understand the architecture of singing to go deeper and deeper. So when you start working, you know, with people, it's interesting to also have that in mind. It's like, oh, like we have, like we have family, like we have family and it brings so much even more heart opening, you know, because then you can serve from yet another place of embodied love. It's like, oh, like it's my family. I love them so much, you know, like could hang out and, and go for coffee and have like, uh, like galactic weekends going on and so on, which, you know, which we have actually in my, <laughs> in my uh, mastermind, we have like four days of galactic, you know, hang out, you know, for these events. So yeah, that, that's really, really important if to awakening the healer within is to realize that you're very unique, very, very unique. And that yes, yes, it is amazing to have to learn, you know, like I learned so much receiving all of these attunements from all of these modalities. Don't get me, I certainly do not regret anything. And like, they're all very valid. Like so many people have massive breakthrough working with Reiki, working with kinesiology, we can like a therapist, like, thank God, you know, please more people also like that. You know, I'm certainly not condemning that at all. But it's like, when we start filling our tools of toolbox and we have all of them, it's like realizing, okay, Thank you very much. Now I have all of this. How does it relate to me? How do I feel? How, how can I channel that in the moment? How can I use all of that to serve my tribe at the highest, to serve my people at the highest? And this is really stepping into our power. And we step into our power with so much humility, realizing that we are simply channeling frequencies of the divine here to shift other people. So yeah, that's um, that's powerful. Like, thank you so much, Bukia, for you know, like letting me know where I was at. <laughs> I feel like it was. I really wanted to share that. So thank you. Well, thank you, Alex. Alexandra sharing. I agree. Freedom is so important to literally allow us to go with the flow in the moment. I studied angelic Reiki, which is very different from regular Reiki, which is also studied and I didn't resonate with. Yes, that's excellent. You see, like keep on learning, keep on opening up because like we learn, we we relate and all of a sudden we like, well, some people they are satisfied with that, but I've never been satisfied with that. So if we're not satisfied with that, it means that there's more learning to do. So if we are unsatisfied with what we have learned it's like oh great amazing need more need more need more <laughs> and there's so many things you know so many things out there mm, love it thank you for sharing does anyone have any questions yeah you stepped at the right time okay thank you I love it, Alexis, that, yeah, Jesus did that. It's uh, shifting people into the highest timeline and in instantly here. Yes, definitely, like, there's so many, like, miracles happening. It's like, 
we trust so much that we are already that there is no other possibility that really anchoring into that frequency of being being like being whole being healed completely being vibrant and super healthy because mm. you know like I, yeah any system is limited by itself so we get to learn to extract what resonates and they shift out to create our own framework um yes <laughs> um so it's important guys if you are on this call you will love this to know that at the moment there is a lot happening on a physical level for certain humans that are being shifted into 5d body fifth dimensional bodies and this is why you know like um this is also why Lisa, you might be experiencing some like pain in the gut, but it also manifests into like having pain in the muscles, into the lower back, in the head, in the shoulders, kind of this pain in the joint. It's because basically we are being shifted into a fifth dimensional bodies. So it means that when we start unplugging from the lower metric systems, uh, we start reclaiming more and more of our freedom. We we can channel more and more life force energy. So basically we slow the aging process down. So we're gonna expand the lifespan, but we're also going to, to reclaim, you know, to reclaim more vibrancy, healthier skin, healthier hair, healthier teeth, healthier everything. And all of that is shifting into fifth dimensional body because yeah, that they say like basically human bodies at the moment, they are constantly, um, constantly under trauma like constantly from the environment, the food that we eat and so on. So this is why it's so Im important to keep on, on deepening our connection, you know, with healthy food and healthy water, because as we shift into a fifth dimensional body, there is a lot of purging that happens. Therefore, the importance to sweat, you know, sauna, exercising and so on, like sweat, moving the body because the toxins get trapped in the joints so it's all very good to kind of um, sit in meditation and heal by shifting frequencies but if we don't move the body if we don't sweat if we don't exercise the muscles then that's gonna it stays there and it stays in the tissues it stays in the soft tissues and the bones and so on so we must work with the physical body and this is where a lot of healer also this is what a lot of healer forget it's like um uh, we need to work with the physical body, embodiment, embodied healing. Yeah, moving the body, right? Thank you very much for sharing this, Ken. I really appreciate um, this vulnerable share, authentic share, which I feel we really saw a lot of us. I have an aspect of myself that wants to take me down an unhealthy path. I have trouble integrating this in a healthy way. That's a beautiful share, like you're experiencing different timelines. So when we grow spiritually, when we are really clear, you know, like we are really clear, okay, so I'm choosing the path of being a good person, being a healthy person, being abundant and, and basically making the right decision for me instead of self-sabotage and self-destruction. It's like of, we are starting to shift frequency to such a level that the outdated reality, they're going to be really triggered because they are still existing in our field and they don't want to disappear. So it's nearly like these frequencies or timelines, they are living. I don't know, um, Ken, if you have read the book from Eckhart Tolle called New Earth. He talks about the suffering body and it really relates to that. It's like this timeline, this suffering body is present, but because we are so devoted on not paying attention to it, not going there anymore, that it's slowly starting to lose its power. You know, like it's like, but then nothing wants to die because it's a frequency that, that was alive. It was with us for so long. Like, oh, we had such a good time, you know, when you self-destruct, when you were so unhealthy, yeah. Like talk for yourself, not me. I don't choose you anymore. So this is going to go like, come back, come back to me. You cannot live without me. Once we were one together, we went one together. And it's literally observing that and saying like, like we've had all of this moment. I acknowledge you, like you exist. Thank you for existing. Thank you for teaching me for so long. You know, like you taught me so much. And 
now that I'm done. I'm not choosing you anymore. So you, you, you can you can go and you can see you and these unhealthy patterns, unhealthy identity self, you know, like you can really visualize that. And it's really going down that wormhole. So you bring that in and then you see that and you can see a cord coming from you to that pattern and you literally can locate the cord and sometimes the cord is like this and then sometimes the cord is like fucking huge like even a tree trunk and you can see the cord between you and this version of yourself that you don't want to be anymore you and this version of your life that you don't want to experience anymore that's over how to dissolve that you see that you connect from the heart like Thank you. Now, thank you. Like we had a beautiful story together. You taught me and really tune into what that taught you. Like courage, the such a strong heart desire to be healthy, like passion for life or wanting to be alive. You know, thank you because you showed me my shadows, my darkness. So now I can, you know, I just fucking want to live my best. So thank you for all of that. Now I wish you goodbye and with love and light. I'm going to dissolve the connection and you literally you take your hand you visualize this cord you take your hand and you rip it and you throw it like this you go like and you throw it like that and you do that a couple of times you take a piece of that cord away and you throw it in the quantum and then you go like shoo 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 and then you ask the decoder friends spiritual team whatever you want to call like please remove this for good from the point of creation all the way to this day through multi-dimensional dimension special reality never to restore return like store that in the akash like a source of information about my different stories but this is not a, and sometimes you have to do that a couple of times like this tremendously um uh, improve our connection with our highest timeline because it's like literally it starts disappearing more and more also so this is an energetic process. It's important to observe what happens on a physical level because if it's unhealthy patterns that are really wired physically, like such as drinking alcohol and smoking or taking drugs, for example, it's very important to support the physical body into this shift because like we remove all these frequencies, like we keep on doing that, but it's important to support the physical body. And there are many, many ways of doing that, like exercising, like working with positive affirmation, you know, tuning into the heart and constantly tuning into the brightest version of who we are. And I loved, um, I love uh, healing and alchemizing with questions. I find it extremely powerful because it creates space to allow whatever needs to arise and be healed and alchemized to rise. So like, what if I could be the brightest version of myself every day? What if it was easy? What if I could wake up in the morning every day for the rest of my life and feel whole? and feel one. What if today I could feel extremely vibrant and happy and joyful all the time? What if I could be there for myself no matter what arises for me? If it's sadness, if it's anger, if it's unhealthy patterns, what if I could simply be there for myself without any judgment? Because I don't want you know, to go into details with you, Kate, I'm not asking you to share, you know, uh, in details, but it's like sometimes unhealthy patterns, we cut away completely and at times they come back sporadically. So I share my own experience like a, as a smoker and especially like a smoking weed. Um, I have, you know, worked tremendously on removing, you know, these very toxic patterns, also drinking alcohol and so on. For my life but every now and then there are little pockets where it comes and it's just a couple of days and i just feel the need like to just kind of hang out with some friends and go party you know it's like it happens very very rarely now but it's like what if i could hold myself into that space and allow my human to have that experience without identifying with it that is not me i'm never gonna be doing that anymore and I'm not identifying with it. It's just like, uh, what if I could allow my human to have a release around that? So I'm just sharing that 
it can work for certain folks, for certain people. It can work with certain addiction and unhealthy patterns, but it might not be the case where, like for example, alcoholics, like really, like it's a no go, like uh, to experience even a drop, right? So just experience this, um, okay? And it's it's beautiful, and you know, like guys, they. Um, there's always more arising to the surface. Like I was sharing, you know, like for me, I've been doing so much work. I thought, yeah, like I don't really have many uh, unhealthy patterns in my life. I didn't even think that I had to heal or alchemize anything until I had that conversation with Alex who poked me <laughs> and who showed me, hmm, there's always more, always more. Remember the iceberg, we deal with the surface, but the rest is gonna come and arise. So, let's hold ourselves you know with so much love and compassion and humility knowing that we are here to have experiences and that experiences they're gonna keep on coming because we we we've got this we've got this we like we were born to do it whatever arises we were born to face it with courage we are born to face it with love and compassion towards ourselves and others and that ultimately this is how we're gonna be able to navigate the waves of life with greater ease and greater clarity. It's because we have this greater understanding that the universe has our back always, no matter the experience, you know, like who are we to judge that an experience is shitty, therefore we must have done something wrong. No, it's just like an experience coming. Are you gonna start judging yourself? Oh, it must be karma, you know, like, oh my God, someone broke into my car, it must be karma. What did I do in another life? But have a luck for goodness sake. No, it's like, maybe it's just an experience to see if you can alchemize straight away and not judge yourself and not think like that. You're just like, oh, someone broke into my car. Fuck, it happened, okay. What can I do now? Okay, let's call a guy and, you know, like, like and let's just sort it out without judgment, without over analysis, you know? That's alchemizing, bam, 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 like that, okay? Thank you, Alex. Thank you, yes, run, run, run. Heidi, yes, Heidi, a carton is new earth. Ah, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yes, I love it, I love it too. Fundamental nature of the 5D body. Yes, Sandhya, thank you very much. I just see that my um, battery is nearly flat let me see i'm just gonna see if i can bring my um my charger because i forgot 